Hi everyone, so this is the start of your video sessions on civil procedure and pleadings 1. This subject, which you will be hearing after referred by me as civil 1, is based on the regular procedure followed in civil courts of Sri Lanka. Having said that, I should uh, emphasize something else. That is, that you need to make sure that your civil procedure code consists of all the amendments. Since the procedures have been enacted by the legislature via the civil procedure code. We need to refer the correct law and follow the correct law. So make sure that you have an amended civil procedure code. Then what I need to tell you all is, unlike other subjects we normally study, this cannot be done studying topics here and there. Since I already mentioned that uh, the subject is based on a procedure, to understand the subject properly, you need to follow it in the prescribed order. Uh, now, let's see what the so-called regular procedure is. The basic steps of the regular procedure are like this. The first step is filing of the plaint. And uh, it is done by the plaintiff. And then what happens is, the court issues summons to the defendant. And then the defendant should file an answer. Now if something in the answer filed by the defendant needed to be or needs to be addressed, then uh, what the plaintiff can do is to file a document called replication. Uh, and if, if the defendant does not answer to the plaint, then the proceedings will be ex parte. And... Uh, the judge or the or the court rather court court can then fix a date uh, for pre-trial if all the documents and all the necessary steps are uh, taken and if no settlement is there in the pre-trial and if uh, a requirement for a trial appears to the court then the court will fix a date for trial and uh, there are also ex parte proceedings are there ex parte procedures are there the end step or the end of the process of regular procedure will be the judgment. So that's like that. And uh, except those uh, basic steps I mentioned here, there are some procedural mechanisms in between those steps as well. So all these will be discussed in this subject and will be tested at the exam as well. So that is the introduction. To civil one. When it comes to learning this subject, what I recommend you to do is, at the first place, to refer the interpretation section of the civil procedure code, that is section 5 of the civil procedure code. Uh, there have been few amendments as well, so without knowing what exactly are meant in the procedure or in the, in the code, learning will become quite difficult. Therefore, first of all, pay some attention to section 5 of the Civil Procedure Code. The next important thing I should highlight is, um, even though Civil 1 is based on the regular procedure prescribed in the Civil Procedure Code, to learn the subject properly, we need some other legislation as well. So, I'll mention some examples. Now, uh, when it comes to finding the correct court to file a case, um, you should be aware of the High Court of Provinces Special Provisions Act number 10 of 1996 as well. And when it comes to checking whether there are limitations to the powers of the district courts, there you will have to refer the interpretation ordinance and any other legislation which enacts special procedures as well and when looking at whether the course of action is prescribed or not we should refer the prescription ordinance as well also we should properly understand what the course of action of a matter is and uh, when determining whether the legislature has empowered district courts to hear a certain case, you will have to refer the Judicature Act as well. Now, you will understand that this subject is 
not something isolated. We need a proper understanding about everything I mentioned here in order to learn Civil 1 properly. Now, in summary, uh, your Civil Procedure Code should be an amended one and you will have to frequently refer Section 5 for interpretation of the terminology. And the third point is that uh, you should keep in mind that uh, to learn the subject properly, you need to refer not only Civil Procedure Code but any other legislation as well. Um, and then let's see what the basic things we should know before learning the procedure. The most important task which is expected from US students at the exam and as well as uh, lawyers one day is to identify the scenario properly and to find the appropriate court to file the plaint or other initiate action. So in the exam as well, more weight will be given to that part. For this identification uh, of the scenario or of the correct court, we have to basically consider few things. The foremost thing is to distinguish whether the case which will be filed is related to a public law remedy or a private law remedy. Now, if it is a public law remedy, as you have studied in your second year for admin law, the court should be court of appeal basically, not the DC. And uh, there you will have to file a writ application. Now, let me say an example. Now, you seek some administrative service from a public officer, let's say. And uh, what the officer does see is, he refuses to give you the service. So, what you can do is, you can file an action as a writ application. And uh, if, you, if you do that, you will be granted uh, what you seek. Uh, so, that should be done in the court of appeal. But let's say like this, now, you uh, seek some service from a public officer while refusing it. Using the service, uh, what the officer does says, uh, he makes you injured. Then, what you should do is to file an action in the district court uh, to get the damage cost, to recover the damage cost. For that, you need to file an action in the district court. So, that's like that. That is the basic identification you should make. And the next thing, as I mentioned earlier, you should know about the High Court of Provinces uh, Special Provisions Act number 10 of 1996. So, there are uh, about, the, about the Act and the Court, uh, you, will, you will be taught later also in a separate lesson. But uh, for the moment, you should know that uh, that consideration also should be done here as well. So, if the matter does not fall under the High Court of Provinces Special Provisions Act, then you can assume, okay, it is not Court of Appeal, it is not uh, Civil Commercial High Court of Western Province, and uh, then you can assume that, okay, this matter should be filed in the DC. It's just an assumption. So, also, you must, you must remember, uh, regarding this Civil Commercial High Court of Western Province, I must say, now, uh, we normally refer this as Commercial High Court, but the correct name is Civil Commercial High Court of Western Province. Uh, this court has been vested civil jurisdiction. And uh, uh, through that there is an act, and the act specified something else that is regarding the jurisdiction of the court, but the procedure is same as uh, in the DC. So what you refer, what you should refer to know the procedure is the Civil Procedure Court itself. Okay, that also you should keep in mind. The next thing you will have to consider is uh, to look whether, to check whether the legislature has empowered district courts to hear such a case. For this you need to refer the Judicature Act and uh, some of the example sections can be uh, named as uh, section 19, 20, 21, 54 of the Judicature Act. Now, if we, if we look at the content, 
Now, Section 19 of the Judicature Act uh, specifies like this. Unlimited original jurisdiction in all civil, revenue, trust, matrimonial, insolvency and testamentary matters and estates of persons of unsound mind and minors. Any other matter which district court has jurisdiction. And Section 20 of the Judicature Act, Custody of Persons. It is about custody of persons. And Section 21 of Judicature Act is about testamentary matters. And Section 54 of the Judicature Act is about injunctions. So that's like that. So if, if the legislature has empowered district courts as such, then what you need to look into is to check whether the relief sought by the client uh, can be given, whether it can, whether those can be given by the district court. For that, you need to refer section two one seven of the Civil Procedure Code. When you read the section, you'll understand that uh, there are types of decrees that can be granted from a district court. Now, if I if I mention those also. Uh, section 217 of the Civil Procedure Code includes the power to declare a right of sta status, uh, order a person to pay money, order a person to yield possession or convey any property, or enjoin a person from doing or not doing an act. So that's like that. Uh, there, are, You need to know that uh, there are some limitations uh, to these powers. So for that you need to refer interpretation ordinance section 23 and 24 and sometimes any other legislation uh, which enacts special procedures. So that is the third point you have to check. And the fourth point you will have to check is uh, if the above, above said points are fulfilled, above are satisfied only you can do this, then you can um, check what the appropriate district court is to file the action. For that you need to refer section 9 of the Civil Procedure Code. Uh, section 9 of the Civil Procedure Code is like this. Subject to pecuniary or other limitations prescribed by any law, action shall be instituted in the court within the local limits of whose jurisdiction a party defendant resides or the land in respect of which the action is brought lies or is situated in whole or in part or because of action arises or the contract sought to be enforced was made. Also provisions for when one of two or more courts may entertain an action is given also provides for nature and value of the case uh, should be given concern to decide the competent court. So you have to read the section properly. Now also before filing a plaint, why now after reading the section 9 also, after finding the correct code also, you have to consider this thing also. This The, the thing I tell is that uh, you need to check whether the procedure prescribed is regular or not. Because uh, now for example, uh, CPC specifies that testamentary matters uh, where the estate of a deceased person is based should be of summary procedure. So likewise we need to refer the relevant provisions all the time to get this sorted out. Uh, now let me summarize what I told. Now the first thing is you, you have to look whether the case is based on a public law remedy or a private law remedy. And if it is public law remedy, you have to go to court of appeal, not district court. And if the matter falls under the High Court of Provinces Special Provisions Act, then what you need to do is you have to file the action in the Civil Commercial High Court of Western Province. And if it is not any no any, no any mentioning of uh, a court is there, then you can assume that okay, this civil case should be filed in a district court. The first point is that. And the second one is uh, whether the legislature has empowered district court to hear such a case. For that you need to refer Judicature Act as I mentioned earlier. And uh, 
the next one is that uh, you need to ascertain whether the district court has the ability to grant the reliefs the client seeks. For that you need to refer section 217 of the civil procedure code. And also there are, as I mentioned earlier also, there are some exceptions to that. So you have to consider those facts as well. And the last, last point is, the fourth point is that you need to ascertain the correct district court thereby. For that you need to refer section 9 and ascertain the correct, the appropriate district court. And also, there you have to uh, consider the fact that uh, you make sure that the procedure is regular or not. So, these are like that. So, this is, this is how it works. Without knowing these fundamentals, it is difficult to learn the civil procedure. You may, you may be able to get through the exam somehow, but to learn it properly, you need to uh, follow this process, process of understanding what is there in the civil procedure code. So, uh, I'm going to bind up the session. Uh, before that, I should uh, mention, be mindful of what I told you. Uh, refer the sections I mentioned in this session and uh, try to understand them and uh, hope you enjoyed this and hope you learned something. Uh, have a good day. Stay safe. Stay home.